A flower grows in the field, majestic in its natural beauty. It exists to be admired, reaching for the sun as it sings its morning song. You're not in Kansas anymore, baby. And this ain't your mama's rose garden. Welcome to the Field of Dreams. Welcome to the 16,000 square foot garden on the roof of the Lazarus Building. The Lazarus Building's green roof redefines the term garden. Gardens aren't just for growing vegetables, and they're not just for pretty flowers either. You've seen this outlaw before. Chrysanthemum leucanthemum. It's got an uncommonly common bloom and regenerates from fragments. The Oxeye Daisy is on every florist's most wanted list. This is Prunella grandiflora. It's no lazy daisy shrinking violet. We're talking about a root shooter with a legendary antidote. The self heal is a team player in roof protection. Or consider Sedum spurium. This plant is tough enough to thrive in rock crevices and is immune to disease and pests. Dragon's Blood Sedum is an incredible team player that also shields against sun rays. Rooftop gardens redefine the urban landscape. This particular garden takes up only 15% of the rooftop's space. Let's explore the numbers. 2006. That's when the owner of the building, the Columbus Downtown Development Corporation, and the development manager, the Georgetown Company, began the major renovation of the building. The Lazarus Building is one of the largest LEED gold certified rehabilitated buildings in the U.S. What is LEED? LEED stands for Leadership and Energy in Environmental Design. The Lazarus Building earned its gold certification on the wings of its eco friendly approach to construction and remodeling. Here's another number. Number one. The Lazarus Green Roof is the first of its kind in Columbus, Ohio. The building's gray water system uses harvested rainwater from the green roof. More than 90,000 gallons of water is collected and stored in the building's water tank. Whoa, that's a lot of gray water. Wait, what is gray water? For the Lazarus Building, it's the rainwater that's collected and recycled for use in watering the roof garden or for flushing toilets. The building's water system helps save water and decreases stormwater pressure on the existing foundation. It irrigates the one-third acre green roof so the garden grows green in every sense of the word. In addition to using gray water, all 177 of the building's toilets are equipped to be water efficient. Only 1.6 gallons of water is used to flush each toilet, less than half the amount of water used by older models. Consider this number, 2,587,000 gallons. That's the amount of water the Lazarus system saves annually. It could fill over 43 Olympic-sized swimming pools. All these conservation practices add up to big numbers in the piggy bank. The Lazarus Building saves over $20,000 annually on utility bills. Who knew going green would actually save so much green? Up for more numbers? 10 for every 3. Every 3 inches of rooftop plant growth can reduce noise as much as 10 decibels. Rooftop gardens reduce temperature fluctuations inside the building too. 50. The Lazarus Green Roof railing contains over 50 planter boxes as part of its structure. Water actually flows through the railing into the planter boxes. How's that for efficiency? The roof's walkway is made of rubber from recycled toys and tires. Like a rubber ball, it can bounce back from just about anything, except knife-like spiky high-heeled shoes. Infinity. That's the number of possibilities when you grow a green roof. It opens us up to the natural world and creates a habitat for countless birds, bees, grasshoppers, ants, and other insects. Unlike the wild prairie, these gardens don't just happen. They have to be tended, or at least the seed has to be planted, literally. Let's meet the visionary behind this project. We wanted to show the residents of Columbus, and particularly the next generation of residents, the school children, of what a green building could be, where the children could congregate and learn lessons about sustainable development. And we saw the green roof as being that center. As a friend of mine recently said, that while at one time it might have been novel, now it just is totally important that any type of development contain within it major ingredients of what we call sustainable development. At the foundation of this garden is the structural support, the building itself, over which lies a vapor control layer, then insulation, waterproof materials, 
drainage, and finally, a mixture of sand and hummus for the soil that hosts the real green team, plant life. Things are not what they seem up here. These plants are selected for their amazing powers. Perennials, they need only to be planted once. Disease resistant, they can survive heat, rain, and drought. I think the most special aspect is the educational aspect that it can have. And the key to that is really not what we did seven years ago, but what folks will do now and going forward. Downtown Columbus isn't just going green, it's growing green.